In this video, I'd like to continue talking about factoring polynomials with complex numbers. And we'll look at another example problem where we need to find the mistake. And there are two general strategies. We can either work out the factorization on our own and compare it step by step, or at each step along the way, we can essentially just re-multiply everything back out to see if we get the expression from the step before it. And we will get more practice by working it out ourselves. So let's apply that strategy. And for that, we'll make a little bit of room. And we can start by just rewriting the original expression. Now, I might mispronounce this, but let's go with spin. Try to write 2x to the 6 plus 4x to the 4th minus 30x squared as a product of linear factors. And this is his work. So in the end, we want each of these factors here to have x to the first power in it. And like I mentioned, we can start by just rewriting the original expression 2x to the 6 plus 4x to the 4th minus 30x squared. And remember when factoring that you should start by looking for a greatest common factor between each of the terms. And we can notice that each term is divisible by two and each term has at least two x's in it or has at least an x squared, I should say. So let's factor out two x squared from each of the terms. And essentially we're just dividing each of these terms by two x squared. So this one right here would just be x to the fourth. This one right here would have a coefficient of two and we pulled out two of those x's, so we're left with two. And this one right here, we're dividing minus 30 by two, so now it's 15. And we pulled out both of those x's. So this should be fully factored here. And of course we can check this by just redistributing. Now comparing our work to his work, we can see that step one looks okay. So now we're gonna focus on this fourth degree polynomial on the inside since it has the special property that we're missing the cubic term and the first power term. And you might notice that this looks like a quadratic. In fact, if we rewrite it as x squared squared plus two x squared minus 15, it might be a little bit more obvious and from here, we can make a substitution. We can say that u is equal to x squared. And by doing this, we can transform the equation into a quadratic, where now we have 2x squared is still on the outside. And on the inside, we now have u squared plus 2u minus 15. And now we have this quadratic, and we can try to factor it as a product of two binomials. So we still rewrite the factor out front, but now we're attempting to write this as a product of two binomials. And we know it will have two terms in each of these expressions. And the first terms have to be u, since if we re-multiply this out at the end, u times u is u squared. So from here, we just need to figure out these constant terms. And we know they will multiply to negative 15 and add to positive two. So let's think which numbers multiply to negative 15. We could have minus one and 15, minus 15 and one. We could have minus three and five or minus five and three. And you can notice that minus three and five makes sense because those actually add to two. So let's plug those in. We have u minus three and u plus five. And we can always test this by just re-multiplying it back out. And you will see that you end up with this quadratic expression there. Now at this point, we started with the variable x, so we want to go back to that. And we know u is equal to x squared, so let's just rewrite this as 2x squared multiplied by x squared minus 3 multiplied by x squared plus 5. And we can check our work compared to his work and see that step 2 looks okay as well. So the first two steps were fine, and now we would continue by trying to factor this difference of squares and factoring this sum of squares. 
So let me just clear out this work here and we can write out those formulas for the sum and difference of squares. Since remember that if we have a squared minus b squared, a difference of squares, this can be factored as a minus b multiplied by a plus b. And if we have a sum of squares, a squared plus b squared, this can be factored using complex numbers as a minus i times b multiplied by a plus i times b. And if we rewrite this expression, clarifying what is exactly being squared here, we can apply these formulas. So we have 2x squared still out in front, but here we have x squared minus the square root of 3. Let me rewrite that, and we're squaring that. And by writing it this way, we make it a little bit more clear that we are subtracting something squared, since if you multiply this out, square root of 3 by itself, then you will get back negative 3. And for this one, we will just rewrite this as the square root of 5 squared. So we have x squared plus root 5 squared, and you can see clearly that we have both a difference of squares and a sum of squares. Now to factor these, we will just apply that formula. And we now have 2x squared. So this is a difference of squares, so we use this formula. We have x minus root 3. Essentially, we are rewriting the same numbers, x and root 3, but now ignoring the squares, and we subtract them first. Then we do x plus root 3. And if you want, you can check this by re-multiplying it out. In fact, you can do that at any step along the way just to make sure that you're doing it correctly. And with this one, we have that sum of squares, so we'll end up with imaginary numbers, but it works similarly to the difference of squares where we essentially ignore the squares now, and we put in i. So we have x plus i root 5, and then x minus i root 5. So this right here is the fully factored expression that we started with. And we just need to compare it to his work to see where there was a mistake or if there was a mistake. And it looks like for step three that he factored this sum of squares into x plus i root 5, x minus i root 5. And that's exactly what we found. So that made sense for step three, but if we look at step four, when he factored his difference of two squares, he ended up with imaginary numbers there. And a difference of two squares does not factor the same way as a sum of two squares. We don't need to use complex numbers when we have a difference of two squares. So it looks like step four is where he made the mistake. Essentially, we should not have i in these two expressions, since if you were to re-multiply these back out, you would actually get x squared plus three, which is not what he had in the step before that. So the answer to this question is that the mistake was made at step four.